Welcome to the mangrove forest. A mangrove tree is one that grows in warm, salty water. Area 1 is a vast, diverse, beautiful ecosystem thanks to the mangrove tree. It's actually the largest mangrove forest in North America. If we look all around the world, we'll see these types of forests in subtropical, tropical areas where you have salty water conditions like we have here. There's over 50 different types of true mangrove trees. Um, in this forest in Florida, we have three types. We have the red, the white, and the black mangrove. The red has these tangled root systems that we'll see as the tide's flooding in. All these tangled roots sticking up right above the water are the roots to the red mangrove. So virtually every tree we see along these islands are all red mangrove. Further in, we'll, we'll see a shift to the black mangrove, and then even further in from that, the least um, water and salt tolerant is the white mangrove. Um, now the reason why we see these trees here, they do not need salt water to survive. But most trees can't survive here because of the harsh conditions. High salt in the water, poor oxygen in the soils. So most trees couldn't survive even if they tried. But the red mangrove has adapted. And the roots we're looking at, the tangled roots will actually block the salt and only filter the fresh water up through its root system. So it has a huge advantage so it can outcompete almost any other tree. Also, on the, on the roots themselves, there's hundreds of little pores that will actually absorb the oxygen right through the air instead of trying to suck it up through the mud and through the water. This is a red mangrove seed pod. It's called a propagule. It germinates on the tree so it gets a head start. And you can see how this would easily get stuck on the mangrove roots or, the, or anything once the tide rolls in so it wouldn't get far in there. Well the black mangrove seed is a sphere so when the tide comes in, it would be able to travel much further in on the island. And the white mangrove is an even smaller sphere, which would be able to travel, travel even further in. So they think it could be as simple as not having anything to do with the salt tolerance or water tolerance, just with how far the seeds can travel into the islands. Now how this forms, so this falls from a mangrove tree, it's already germinated, it's bobbing along, it can stay viable for a year, um, floating around in the water. Now it's got to find a hard substrate, something hard for it to grab hold to. And in most cases, the bases of these islands underneath these trees are oyster beds. The oysters tend to stack up on top of each other over time. The beds can get large and get to the surface of the water. Low tide, you have these oysters sticking out of the water. This little seed pod just randomly comes bobbing along, snags on these oyster shells. Within hours, is going to shoot roots out and grab hold. Leaves will come out the top, and given 10 years, one of these guys finding some oyster shells can form an entire canopy of these islands. They grow incredibly fast. Now the black mangrove, um, further in, you'll see that guy, and you, if they get their name from the tints. If you, you'll see the reddish tint on the red, the black, and then the white. Um, the black doesn't have the tangled roots. It has it's called pneumatophores, or like little pencil roots that stick up out of the ground that reach up to the air to pull that oxygen in. Now they don't have that filtering system, the black mangrove, so they'll suck up the salt with the water and they'll actually secrete the salt in deposits on the bottoms of the leaves. So if you took a red mangrove leaf and lick the bottom, it would not be salty because the salt is filtered out. If you took a black mangrove leaf and licked the bottom, it would be extremely salty. You'd even see like salt deposits. That's how they get rid of the salt. So two totally different methods. They're even, all mangrove trees are not even, a lot of them are not even really closely related. They're just grouped into this big category because they can survive in the same spot. So they've adapted different ways to do it, but can live in the same spot. And some say, it's scientists say it's as simple as seed disbursement of why the reds are always on the on the outside and the blacks are further in and the whites are even further in. It's going to have all these opportunistic roots that are going to spread out as two types of roots actually. The ones that crawl along the bottom and there's other roots that drop from the branches and help anchor it in. So it's actually not going very deep at all, just inches, but because it has hundreds of roots grabbing hold it's actually pretty sturdy. But then that one tree grows, drops hundreds of more propagules, some float away, some get lodged right next to it and sprout new trees. And as this happens, um, 
the roots trap sediment from the high tide, and also old leaves and old roots decompose, and it keeps building up, and you'll actually eventually get a layer of peaty soil, and over years, you'll actually you'll build up so high where you'll get a hard ground in the center that'll be above the tide line. And once you get that hard, dry ground in the center, then other tree seeds can start growing like palms and hardwoods and things like that. And then the tide comes in and draws all these nutrients out throughout the whole estuary. So the trees are the basis of the whole food chain out here. Um, and in addition to that, you see those tangled roots. I mean, 75% at least of our fish spend some part of their life cycle in amongst the, those roots of the red mangrove. It's a really productive area for young fish, but also for um, pink shrimp and crabs and all sorts of things. Along with the many species of fish and crustaceans that Kent just mentioned, we also see many different types of birds. We see herons, egrets, ibis, pelicans, and even the magnificent frigate bird. Yeah, yeah, not to be confused with the uh, with the sort of cool frigate bird. <laughs> we even see white-tailed deer, raccoons, and bobcats. The mangrove forest is also extremely vital to our dolphin population. The 60 or so dolphins in Area 1 alone consume over 500,000 pounds of fish a year. Our coastal bottlenose dolphins are able to stay year-round because of the dense fish populations attracted by the mangroves. They also have many different coves and areas that protect them from predators like sharks, heavy boat traffic, and severe weather. Now the mangrove forests are protected all throughout Florida. Not only is it a basis of the food chain, but it's also important because it provides a place to live for hundreds of types of animals. Lastly, it's a great protection for the coast of Florida from hurricanes. The large mangrove forest acts as a buffer zone from the storm surge that can come through. We hope you enjoyed your journey through the mangrove forest.